Born in Ube Yamaguchi in February 1949, Tadashi Yanai's early years were spent in a family that struggled financially. His parents own a small clothing store there, and he grew up living right above the store. Despite this, Yanai's parents instilled in him a strong work ethic and an unwavering determination to succeed. And this little boy from southwestern Japan would grow up to become one of Japan's most successful entrepreneurs. After graduating from Waseda University in 1971 with a degree in economics and political science, Yanai spent a few years working for a supermarket chain and traveling the world. He finally returned to his father's shop, then called Ogori Shoji, where he learned the ropes of running a business. The first few years proved to be a steep learning curve for Yanai, a crash course in running a business. I needed to clean the store, brush the jackets, do the sourcing. I literally had to do everything myself because there was nobody else. He told the business of fashion in 2016. It was a huge learning opportunity. By 1984, Yanai had taken the reins as CEO. He had big ideas and an even bigger plan for fashion world domination. He established the first branch of Uniqlo in Hiroshima, but it wasn't actually called Uniqlo at that time. Well, what was it called then? We'll talk about that later in the video. Inspired by the European and American brands such as Benetton, Gap, and Esprit that Yanai had seen during his travels, he set to work transplanting the model of mass-made casual apparel chains into Japan. In 1991, he changed the company name from Ogori Shoji to the more globally identifiable fast retailing, a nod to the fast food prototype. And fast retailing is actually the parent company of Uniqlo. The first Uniqlo store was not profitable. Yanai was forced to close it down after just one year. But Yanai was not one to give up easily. He stayed determined and continued to refine his business model. And with time, he successfully built a loyal customer base in Japan. Yanai's big break came in the late 1990s when he decided to expand Uniqlo's operations outside of Japan. In 1998, he opened the first Uniqlo store in London, England, which was an immediate success. Yanai continued to expand Uniqlo's global reach, opening stores in New York City, Paris, and other major cities around the world. As of October 2021, Yanai was the richest person in Japan, with an estimated net worth of $26.5 billion and the 40th wealthiest person in the world, according to Bloomberg Billionaires Index. Uniqlo, the brand known for its high quality and affordable casual wear, started small as a textile manufacturer in Hiroshima in 1949. But today, it has a global presence, and their first retail store opened back in 1984. Tadashi Yanai had the vision to create a clothing empire that not only made customers look good, but also feel good. He was inspired by the teachings of American management expert Peter Drucker, who believed in putting customers first before profit. With this philosophy in mind, Yanai added women's clothing to his men's wear store and rebranded the entire operation as Unique Clothing Warehouse. He knew that one store wasn't enough and he wanted to build an empire that would benefit not only himself but also the world. Yanai was unafraid to learn from the best and sought out Mickey Drexler, the president of The Gap, to study his every move. He even had Gap-like commercials made for Unico with celebrities dancing around in khakis. Imitating Gap proved to be a massively successful strategy for Uniqlo, and in the early 1990s, during a recession in Japan, Uniqlo was able to put itself on the map by delivering cheaper goods that people wanted. And it was even called Japan's answer to Gap. The name Uniqlo is not just catchy and easy to remember. It has a deeper meaning rooted in the brand's history, as it's actually a sort of short form of the initial name Uniqlo Clothing Warehouse. In 1993, Yanai took a daring step and shifted all production to China, cutting the cost of the clothing he sold and further increasing profits. By 1994, there were already 100 stores in Japan and Uniqlo's expansion continued. However, there were some big stumbles along the way. In 2002, Yanai was ready to expand globally, but his sizing metrics did not translate well to the American market. Uniqlo's standard sizing metrics were met with derision, as the average Japanese man and woman are much smaller than the average American adult. 
Within 18 months, Unico closed 16 of its London store and all three New Jersey locations. This failure of Uniqlo's overseas expansion taught Yanai a very important lesson. Uniqlo had succeeded in Japan by being universally present everywhere. But for it to succeed globally, it also had to have style. It had to be cool. And so, Uniqlo began to focus on collaborations with franchises and designers such as Jill Sander, Undercover, and J.W. Anderson. These collaborations not only brought a touch of high fashion to Uniqlo, but also gave the brand a new image that appealed to a younger demographic, and more and more young people became interested in buying their clothes. Along with these collaborations, Uniqlo also invested heavily in marketing, including a notable ad campaign featuring American tennis player Novak Djokovic. The brand continued to grow and expand globally, opening stores in major cities such as New York, London, and Paris. With over 2,200 stores in 25 countries, Uniqlo is now a global fashion giant, and Tadashi Yanai is still at the helm, driving the brand forward. With his passion for affordable fashion and a desire to make the world a better place through his company's success. At its core, Uniqlo is still a fast fashion brand, and fast fashion has pervaded our world enveloping us in its affordability, trendiness, and ever-changing styles. At first glance, it seems to be a win-win solution for consumers. However, a closer examination reveals a complex web of positive and negative effects that really need to be considered. On one hand, fast fashion has democratized fashion to some extent, allowing people of all income levels to express themselves through their clothing choices. It has also created employment opportunities in developing countries, providing a means of livelihood for those who might not have had one otherwise. Plus, fast fashion has been acknowledged for its efforts in promoting sustainability through eco-friendly materials and practices. Some brands have committed to reducing waste and carbon emissions, introducing recycling programs for used clothing to minimize their environmental impact. Yet, the negative effects of fast fashion are far greater. The constant production of new and cheap clothing has resulted in a vicious cycle of overconsumption and waste, with the fashion industry being responsible for a staggering 10% of global carbon emissions. The use of non-biodegradable fabrics and chemicals further contributes to environmental degradation. Let's not forget fast fashion's exploitative labor practices. The relentless pressure to produce clothing rapidly and cheaply leads to underpaid and overworked factory workers in developing countries with child labor being utilized to cut production costs. These workers are subjected to pretty dangerous working conditions with their rights being violated on a regular basis. Fast fashion's detrimental effects on consumers are often overlooked. The constant need to stay up to date with the latest trends results in the culture of disposability, with clothing seen as disposable and quickly discarded. This attitude not only fuels waste, but also has a detrimental impact on mental health, with individuals feeling pressured to keep up with trends and overspending to do so because they've got major FOMO. But it's essential to recognize that the power to make a difference lies with us, the consumers. By choosing to purchase from ethical and sustainable brands, we can support practices that are better for the environment and workers alike. As consumers, we hold the power to demand change from the fashion industry and hold brands accountable for their practices. Uniqlo is more than just another clothing brand. It's a game-changer, a revolutionary force that has transformed the fashion industry. With over 2,200 stores across 25 countries, Uniqlo has become a global phenomenon loved by millions for its high-quality, affordable clothing and unwavering commitment to customer satisfaction. The way it rose from being a small textile manufacturer to a company famous worldwide is truly applaudable. And the credit really goes to the founder, Tadashi Yanai, who was a young man with big dreams and a fierce ambition to create a clothing brand that would change the world, and he did it. From the very beginning, Uniqlo's philosophy was simple, to provide high-quality clothing at an affordable price, so that everyone could feel confident and stylish without breaking the bank. Uniqlo has always prioritized customer satisfaction by listening to feedback, adapting to customer needs, and always improving and innovating. Their focus on innovation and diversity has really done a great job in challenging conventions and pushing boundaries. 
and their collaborations with world-renowned designers like Jill Sander and Alexander Wang have really contributed to the international success and brand image of Uniqlo. Their marketing campaigns celebrate individuality and self-expression, reminding us that fashion is not just about the clothes we wear, but the message we send. Uniqlo really sells a lifestyle, and no wonder they are now taking over the world with their affordable and stylish outfits that even Gen Z loves. Looks like Uniqlo is here to stay, and will keep on dominating the world of fashion in Japan and beyond for decades to come. And who knows, maybe even more.